Movies on television bring families together, influence viewing habits and impact conversations. They are an essential part of our lives. Not only that, the synergy of movies and television has also proven to be lucrative for brands that want to reach India at large. In a series of chats with marketers and media leaders, we discuss Bollywood and brands, all things related to marketing, media, and especially movies. I am your host, Susmita, Executive Editor at AFAX, and today my guest is Ajay Dam, President and Head Marketing at Ultratech Cement. Welcome, Ajay. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Ajay, I want to start with a little, you know, personal question. Uh, often when we speak to industry leaders, you know, we know their LinkedIn resume first before we know anything else about them. So uh, if you could tell us a little about um, your where you grew up, your, uh, you know, background, etc. And then we'll come to your love to love for movies as well. Sure. Uh, so I think pretty much... Uh fairly normal and uneventful childhood. In fact, so much so that uh, I've largely grown up. Uh, I remember uh, in JNK, Udhampur, army stations, army and air force stations. I think that's where uh, I've grown up. In fact, I, in one sense, am the black sheep of the family of not going into the forces, uh, but uh, had, had some really blissful, very, very no- normal, uh, childhood and very, very, uh, uh, shall I say, when I look at my kids, non-stressful compared to 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 what their childhood is. Okay. And did that, uh, you know, being an army kid, um, how did that impact, say, extracurricular activities or where you, you said you had a very normal childhood or, you know, was it very academic driven? Uh, so I think I was academically focused, but not necessarily marks focused. Uh, shall I say it was more out of things that I like to do. I I I loved those subjects and I went into them, uh, not necessarily giving too much consideration whether I uh, those those are marks worthy or not. Uh, I think that was the uh, unlike a metro uh, grooming, uh, you were very quote unquote there wasn't an objective apart from what you love doing okay got it you said you know you're the black sheep of the family but for us uh, who cover advertising media etc you know people like you uh, have chosen great fields to work in so I want to know what drew you to marketing Uh, actually I uh, I before uh, I think I did my MBA I I worked for Nestle for a while uh, uh, and uh, it was great to see what I think impacted business and I I think found very early that business is a people business kind of stuff, right? Anything that you do, whether it is sales, HR, anything, right? It it, it had great uh, sense of, uh, I think, people involvement. And once I got to the business side, once I did my uh, kind of uh, business management, uh, I think this drew me to to the field because uh, that's the that's the always conundrum: how to understand people and how they tick and how what what makes them decide one way or the other things. I think that's always fascinated me, and uh, yeah, that's that's something that I have. I've always found very, very useful. In fact, uh, <clears throat> from very early on, uh, I think I found a divergence that I think as business people, we focus far too much on our categories because we love them. Uh, we we are very type A people, but we oftentimes don't focus as much on our consumers. Uh, that dichotomy got me a lot of success early on and got me hooked on. So any examples of where um, this dichotomy, you used it in a campaign, something memorable from your uh, decades of experience that you can share with us? Uh, So so I think I've worked on some uh, brands. I've worked on uh, various categories. FMCG has been about 60-70% of my career uh, from Colgate to Godrej, couple of stints at Godrej uh, with uh, Hindustan Times. Uh, uh, and 
I think then some other sectors I worked for media for a while, HD, uh, G, and uh, then Ultratech. So all across, uh, I think whether most of these roles were without a playbook, they were not necessarily categories which were where you had the uh, you had the glide path written down. Uh, for example, insecticides is a category. Uh, brands like Goodnight and Hitch, I think, are hugely par brands. And today, uh, unlike being called commodities, uh, today they command premiums or margins uh, almost as good as luxury goods, uh, if you may. Uh, so, if that has come about not by focusing on the product, but how do they impact consumers? How do they impact their lives? What's the jobs to be done? that uh, they do and deeply understanding the context in which people made decisions uh, i think that that was that across whether it is uh, i think building good night from a 18% share to last that i remember we had nearly about 60% market share uh, to uh, i think challenging times of india in in bombay uh, from a from a uh, completely underdog to a, a nearly equal position uh, to hair in Ultratech where uh, it's thought of as a commodity category but uh, if I can share the last six seven years we've grown where FMCG has struggled to keep volume growth at uh, just about GDP level we've grown at close to about 15 plus percent uh, in this economy at a very very large base uh, uh, so uh, I think each one of these work, I have not taken too much as a communication role. While the role is marketing, I have not taken the first piece that I think I've attacked them as as largely insight roles uh, and understanding the business and how does that link with consumers. Uh, I think those have things which have spurred success in each one of the roles. Okay, got it. And uh, now coming to movies, my first question is, do you love watching movies and is there a movie you are looking forward to? Now there are a lot of new releases coming up. So uh, anything uh, that you are waiting for? Uh, so I love movies. I think storytelling, no marketer uh, is yeah, two things that I think I define marketing as one is listening and sto the second is storytelling. And I think who better to learn that art and craft of storytelling than movies. And we've had a rich tradition uh, before movies, but uh, as a culture always of storytelling, but movies has taken that one step further. Uh, and how we mix across the entire gamut of things into, into a three hour or two, two and a half hour movie is, is fascinating. Kind of how we define our heroes, how we place context i think it's fascinating and uh, if you see the uh, stuff of movies uh, uh, it's also very very closely followed indians uh, indian uh, uh, the entire consciousness of the country and what the mood of the country is and what is the cultural ethos of the country so uh, you don't need to do too much research uh, you can understand a lot about what's happening in the country through, uh, I think, movies that make sense to people. Uh, and movies you are looking forward to? Uh, yeah, I watch movies from all 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 genre. I think uh, I'm an avid movie buff, so I watch uh, movies from all, all genre. Mostly not pot, pot boilers, but uh, I think slightly off now, uh, with age, I think you look for a little bit of personal entertainment where things are a little more uh, real. Uh, uh, and uh, so that's that's something that I like. Got it. And uh, now I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the business of movies and using movies, brands using movies is... Um, I mean, in the recent past, we've seen a lot of movies making record box office collections. I mean, some like Pathan, Gadar 2, Jawan, Tiger 3, Animal also last year. I think cumulatively, they earned about 3,000 crore at the box office. And um, I mean, recently, we also had Fighter and Teri Baato Me and stuff. 
so i want to know how is it that marketers can leverage movies to fuel growth for brands i think we look as marketers as marketers if you if you think about it i think there are two three thoughts uh, per se one uh i think if you uh, looking at pure purely as audience uh, gatherers kind of stuff and uh, which is what you look at any any medium to do, do the job and in that sense i think it's interesting that movies possibly in theater viewing is actually a fairly small number uh, compared to the overall viewership of movies in this country uh uh so i think that's an interesting point and therefore movies partly uh, if you have a very very poor audience in metros or 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 centers which are there are i think centers in in the country which are fairly heavy uh, 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 cinema viewership audience uh, but by and large the large country viewership is through through television so that's a that's a interesting and now ott and and so on and so forth so that's an interesting piece that we we utilize and uh, i think that's a genre that has very very steady uh, if you may it's a it's a very steady cushion in the overall me- viewership per se so uh, if you have if you don't have a large event and think about it from a from a ordinary consumer or ordinary viewer point of view i think if there is non uh uh non if you may uh yeah, agenda based viewership that is there often times it lands up to uh, uh to movies uh and that i think our country loves we are we are we are we are good with that and therefore i think it is part of regular plans and media plans per se to often times to build a reasonable amount of frequency because this once people are in the medium they stick around for a while got it and it also aids i mean because it's a shared experience a lot like live cricket so you sure. end reaching a family audience also yeah 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 absolutely you're bang on i think it's often times shared viewership and it's often times although with ott etc it's it's becoming a little little uh, specific and with some movie genres it's become becoming a little bit of a uh uh it's it's becoming personal viewership and niche viewership it's tending towards that however i think broadly what you're saying is right as a genre uh it's family viewership and it's a it's a it's it's a long viewership uh, uh that that and therefore aids the uh, frequency building uh, from your media attention point of view it's a lot of comfort viewing right i found myself watching hum aapke hai kaun very recently so yeah. plays you tend to go back to it just because you know the beats of the movie and this. and and sushmita you're right i think if you don't have a tens- if you don't have a appointment viewing as to you're not going in to watch a specific program uh, often times uh, in the common lowest common denominator or, or the the uh, what is agreeable to everyone in the family movies come on and that's what is i think seen Okay. And um given that Hindi movie channels on TV aggregate a large set of audiences it's I'm sure a great uh, investment opportunity for brands what is your recommended strategy for um movie uh, premieres like movie premiere um buying is it mainly RODP buys how do you uh, go about it I think uh there are uh how, like I said if you look at the stats of uh, viewership in cinema and viewership in uh, on uh, in home in that sense of the word i think the figure is hugely lopsided towards in home viewership uh, a lot of it might also so one is the access issue and it having to everybody having to plan and go and second is tickets and and the uh, uh, ancillary expenses and so on and so forth therefore the numbers in terms of ratios are very very largely skewed towards uh, in home viewership when movies come as as uh, premieres and so on and so forth so i think that's a reasonable 
uh, opportunity for for you to pick up uh, of course i think at the right cost and so on and uh, uh, they built i think even reruns built reasonable amount of frequency for 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 you got it and i want to now come to uh, a little bit about you know uh, using tv to drive awareness a uh, kantar uh, cross media study in india from 2012 to 2023 of about 125 case studies found that a third of impact building of brand awareness comes from tv um this is something you agree with and therefore um, how do you use television um, overall so i uh, i think if at all it is possibly underestimated i think kantar underestimates that because uh two three things point of view uh, and you have different kind of advertising you have stuff that is brand building and building the long term equity and uh, the short term equity as well uh, and then there is largely essentially what i call harvesting from a uh, uh, from a from a media activation point of view i think digital largely does the harvesting job slightly better but given the attention span that you have on digital uh establishing equity establishing brands per se on digital is is a humongously uh, kind of difficult job given so uh they say that nearly and one of the studies i think peter field is a renowned expert and Karen Nelson is a renowned expert uh, uh, I think in the west uh, talking about attention spans that different media uh, get uh, so a large nearly 89% of creatives that work on digital uh, you don't get the two and a half seconds uh, of attention uh, that is required to lodge something into your permanent memory because finally you're trying to build uh, uh uh in one sense mental availability for your brands uh and especially if you have brands which are slightly long cycle brands and they're not the immediate top of mind and attention piece that you need i think from those points of view tv is a invaluable medium uh from that of course i think digital ads from a point of view of there are some audience which are kind of low tv viewership or maybe i think building a little bit of incremental reach uh, uh so digital adds to that how would i in my mind i think tv or call it ctv or ott the the sit back viewing uh, i think that's a very necessary uh, thing from a long term mental availability building and and brand building point of view got it and uh, if i can take you uh, to tell us a little about you know what would be an ideal media mix so digital has its place um with that harvesting bit that you were talking about and tv with the long term brand building so what should constitute a you know media mix for a general brand um that is uh, working on both harvesting a uh, consumer and that long term um, brand building as well so yeah different medicines for different ailments i i must say uh, there's no one i think there's nothing right between a fork and a knife i think both have their uses uh, i think it depends upon what your category uh, uh, buying behavior is depends upon what your brand's job is uh, and that i think you should you should adopt to it but most people i think most experts talk about putting nearly uh, 60 plus percentage on uh, a long term brand building because the great thing about long term brand building is it does the short term thing as well uh, the short term uh, activation uh, unfortunately it doesn't deliver on to the long term piece so if you are disciplined enough i think if you are uh, uh, if you are strategic enough i think you'd spend far more money towards the the long term play of course harvesting is also needed of course reminders are also needed and like i said there are audience which are tv uh, lean or there is reach that you can build up in because up north for example there 
large TV dark markets uh, per se. Uh, so those markets, of course, you need uh, digital to extend reach or or to uh, to to talk to those consumers as well. But like I said, it's horses for courses. So I think there's no one medicine. It's a toolbox, and I think different things work uh, depending upon your need. Got it. And we spoke about you know the big blockbusters and their premieres and them attracting um, viewership on TV channels. But there are also those sleeper hits that come. You know, Twelfth Fail is a great example, um, or or even this recent um, horror movie Munjia. Right. I mean, nobody expected them to be great hits, but they've turned out to be great hits. Um, how do you factor these into your um, media planning when it comes to movie channels? Uh, do, do you take a fresh look at them and um, invest in them? What do you do? So I think look at them as pieces of content and you're taking a bet on whether it will draw audience or not. So there are a million reasons why uh, I think audience walks across to a, it might be a great piece of content. But I understand that there is a threshold of a movie ticket, planning, going for it, how much it, well it has been marketed, are there big stars to pull people to 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 uh, uh, in one sense cinema halls. Uh, those thresholds not necessary when movies come to whether OTT or television. Uh, I think if it's great content, it is great content. Uh, uh, and by the time I think movies come to uh, television, you already have a certain amount of sufficient mass of people gathered as to uh, whether there is it is a great you have great reviews. I think positive, negative, either way, you understand as to where it is going. Uh, so oftentimes, I think things which which not which are great stories. Uh, may not have as much star appeal or so on. Uh, once they land up on television, because they are great stories, people watch them. And uh, I think that's the piece to factor in and 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 take in when you are when you are uh, taking in one sense educated bets on these things. Got it. And finally, one last question is. Uh... What would your um, last words of advice be to uh, brands that are possibly going to be leveraging uh, movie channels for uh, marketing? Um, how should they um, use it? Uh, what percentage of uh, media spends should they put on it? Um, any any um, specific advice? So I think I'll tell you the formula that we, we follow. We follow viewership. I think we take our core audience and see movie viewership and thereafter go uh, go with it. Uh, different brands might have a different take because, like I said, the storytelling potential might vary depending upon the category that you are in uh, uh, and what opportunities does it present. Uh, so I think it depends upon, I think first piece is, basic piece is to follow viewership and and uh, see the potential of it be building reasonable amount of not just reach but also reasonable amount of frequency and therefore i i use the term viewership uh, overall viewership so i think use that as a term uh, and of course if your category permits if there is any strategic piece that i think can help in terms of storytelling by all means got it Superb. Thank you so much, uh, Ajay, for your time today. It's been a little masterclass on both marketing and uh, media strategy planning. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you.